Today we are embarking on a journey about chainsaws and men. I have volumes 1 through 11 of Chainsaw Man right in front of me and we are going to read every single volume today in less than 24 hours or at least that is the goal because I've been collecting this series pretty slowly and it turns out that I've been collecting it way too slowly because part 2 is coming in like 10 days and I have yet to dive into this. I have my water, my matcha latte, my yerba mate. I woke up like 10 minutes ago and I'm just gonna let you guys know I have zero preconceived notions about this series. All I know is that it's a popular shonen. I'm not even gonna lie to you guys, I don't even know what this series is about. But let's go ahead and jump into it. We'll talk about it as we go and we'll give a review at the end. But here we go, Chainsaw Man, part one, volumes one through 11. The one thing I will say is this character, I don't even know what his name is yet, is so cute. I see him all the time. I want a plushie of him. Okay, so right off the bat, it's an interesting dynamic. This guy's a devil hunter just for money. That's a pretty crazy profession, but he is in about $38 million worth of debt. So I guess you're kind of down to do anything when you're in that much debt. Well, this is pretty depressing. Turns out that Denji, the main character, is only in so much debt because his dad passed away with that debt and owes it to the Yakuza. Now Denji is working off his dad's debt, who isn't even around, and he's literally living off a single slice of bread a day. This is pretty heavy for 7.50 in the morning. <laughs> the Yakuza is already betraying Denji even though he does literally everything that is asked of him, takes cuts on his pay, and will eat a cigarette butt for money. But that's not enough. That's not enough. They still have to kill him. <laughs> ah, I get it. I finally get the cover. I was wondering how he turned into a man with a bunch of chainsaws, but he merged with Pochita and now they're just a badass devil hybrid human that kill devils. That's pretty cool. And the ripcord in his chest is definitely interesting for sure. Okay, first chapter done and wow, they just really went for it in the first chapter. What I will say is it's kind of sad that Denji here is just dreaming of a normal life because he is just so beaten down his entire life and he finally kind of breaks free from his debt by just slaying all of the yakuza zombie devils and then just falls into the hands of another person denji just wants to be free and he keeps essentially being held captive by one person to the next whether it be his dad whether it be the yakuza or this mysterious girl that we don't know about yet chapter two is finished it was a lot quicker than the first chapter not too much happened aside from the fact that we still see denji trying to escape his life even with meeting makima because he realizes that he is just falling under one person to the next but then at the end we see that makima says that she likes him she could just be playing with his feelings I have no idea but let's see what happens well the manga started off in a very serious tone and it just turned into straight-up perversion for Denji he just wants to feel up a girl that is his only goal I guess it is nice to see him in solace being able to eat food daily and have somewhere to shower and sleep and we just met power power looks pretty badass she's a fiend as well so I guess they kind of have something in common even though Denji's technically not a fiend so it looks like Denji got caught up in his lusts and got bamboozled by good old power here who is sending him to a bat devil who is honestly pretty terrifying i don't like bats in the first place he decided to sacrifice him to this bat devil the story is kind of crazy because it goes from like insanely violent and serious to just absurdity in the weirdest ways so volume one is in the books i would say this is a pretty strong start it got a little odd from time to time honestly i think it's a good read it touches on class disparity and you see denji literally doing anything just to live at some points in this manga let alone just live a normal life which is his dream whereas we see other people's dreams being far and wide more superior than just a normal dream so it's cool to put things into perspective from denji to the next characters in this story and honestly at the end we got to see that power was only trying to sacrifice denji to that bat devil because that was the only way that she can get that one piece of comfort in her life back meowie her cat it's interesting to see how far people are willing to go in this story just to get like that one piece of solitude and comfort in such a dark world i think this is a definitely a strong start i'm just gonna jump right into volume two looks like we have power on the front cover so maybe we'll learn a little bit more about her i'm excited to see what comes next for the public safety devil extermination team okay let me pause for a second and just appreciate how beautiful the artwork is in this freaking story Story, and it looks like Denji is going to save power for his own selfish reasons of sexuality. 
but this page is absolutely gorgeous. Tatsuki Fujimoto outdid himself with this. We finally get to see Ayakawa's powers and oh my gosh, he is next to level. He saves Denji from the leech devil because Denji was trying to save Miaoi and power. I mean, it was for his own selfish reasons, but at the end of the day, he was still doing a good deed. I guess we can kind of see past the sleaziness and just see it for what it is as Denji's just trying to do normal things before he dies. Surely it's that. I, I also have to remember that this is a shonen. There's still going to be like some random jokes and perversion ingrained within shonens. I have to just like sit back and remind myself of that sometimes. All right, it's official. Power is the absolute worst roommate of all time. I would never ever want a roommate like her she seems absolutely terrible so denji is off to kill the gun devil and he will get any one wish from makima i wonder what it will be after she just royally teased him for like two pages this gun devil honestly i don't even know if i would go and try and kill it because it killed 1.2 million people in five minutes uh yeah i think i'm gonna pass on that i think i'm gonna pass why is every single reward for taking down a devil a kiss or a sexual favor <laughs> it's not something more serious i guess because denji is just kind of like a brute and has an experienced life it's weird like every single girl that's in power not talking about power the the fiend but every girl that is in power the reward for taking down a devil is like kissing denji or whoever takes it down or something else which i find a little bit odd but i guess that's the world that we're in himino i think her name is she's badass i like her a lot instantly she is such a cool character and her powers are awesome her deal with the ghost devil that is probably my favorite power and honestly let me just say why is this world so freaking cruel from the devils that people are fighting to the actual people that are fighting the devils themselves every single person is just like extremely cruel and serious there is like no room for niceness in this world at all. It's kind of sad. Okay, so volume two is done and in the books. Now, what I will say is the volume started off a little bit slow in my opinion, but picked up immensely as it went on. The whole eighth floor devil trick thing that they're stuck in right now is actually a really cool concept. I like it a lot. And on top of it, we get to see more of Himeno, who I think is an awesome character. I wanna see more of her in the upcoming volumes. And lucky for me, on volume three, she's on the front cover. So I'm assuming we're gonna know more about her. Power and Denji have a pretty interesting dynamic. They're both pretty much children with Aki, and Himeno looking over them and Makima as well I guess. It ended on a cliffhanger with that 8th floor devil offering a contract to these devil hunters saying give me Denji and I will let the rest of you go. So clearly Denji has something very special that the devils want to get rid of because that's probably the only way that the devils will be exterminated. You know the MC always has this one tiny special thing that he doesn't even know about yet that will be unlocked later on. So I'm gonna go ahead and dive into volume 3. I can't wait to see what's next. Oh my gosh. First thing I see, Fujimoto gives little clips in the beginning. I love Hereditary. Dude, that movie is so freaking good. I love that movie so much. Chainsaw Man, best manga series of all time. Tatsuki Fujimoto, best mangaka of all time as well. He's got great movie taste. Okay, all I gotta say is what happened to loyalty between co-workers? Everybody is just trying to murder Denji to get out of this 8th floor situation. I mean, yes, the Eternity Devil is pretty insane. Its heart isn't even in the 8th floor, which is crazy. I mean, how big is this devil gonna be? But don't kill Denji. It's clear that they only want to kill Denji because he is probably the only person who can kill the most powerful devils. But what I will say is Power needs to go. She ate all of their food before they could even ration it out and portion it out they don't know how long they're gonna be there power just freaking chow down i cannot wait to see this scene in anime just fully animated it's gonna be so freaking cool like just looking at the drawings and the artwork is absolutely insane but when it comes to life i cannot wait for this show to come out it's gonna be awesome dude this scene with denji and the eternity devil is insane it's so freaking good i wouldn't say that i was like fully committed to this series until the this moment. The artwork is insane, the concept of the 8th floor was insane, and we get to see a little more insight into Imano's 
his life and she clearly loves Aki or has strong feelings for him. She at least cares about him immensely because she tried to move him out of the public safety devil's extermination into the civilian sector so he doesn't get hurt trying to hunt down the gun devil. I really, really enjoyed this little arc in Chainsaw Man. It's honestly my favorite so far, but we also have uh, eight volumes to go, so who knows? Denji has just realized when he loses all of his blood, his chainsaws retract, but now he can just keep drinking the devil's blood as he's murdering around him. That's a pretty cool concept that I have not heard of in manga or TV or really anything. And he kind of just figured out how to stay perma chainsaw man until the fighting is over, which is a pretty insane revelation, I would say. And the fact that Denji literally fought for three days straight against the Eternity Devil, well, Denji's first kiss was interesting to say the least. That is absolutely disgusting. That whole scene was just, no. What the hell just happened? Freaking Makima just got shot in the head on the train. That's not how it happens. Um, okay, now Denji just got shot in the head. So Makima, Denji, what is what is happening? So apparently the gun devil is just after Denji and sending out these random assassins. I don't know, can they die? Can they can they die if they get killed by like normal things? Okay, volume three is done. What the hell just happened? We have Imino possibly dying, Aki possibly dying. It looks like Denji came back from the dead after being shot, so it doesn't really matter. Everybody around him seems to be dead and power ran off. So this mysterious girl who is like training devils and also all powerful is just like taking out all of these devil hunters. I don't know what's gonna happen next. I don't want these people to die. I like Imino, I like Aki. I gotta get into volume four. Aki's on the front, so he's still alive, right? He has to be alive, surely. Okay, nope, nope, I won't stand for this. I won't stand for this. I will not stand for this. Even devil hunters are only human. They can't win against guns. So so what you're telling me is Araya's dead? Kobeni's dead? Makima's dead? Is Imono dead as well? And even possibly Aki? What? You can't introduce me to all these characters in the first three and a half volumes and then just get rid of them all. And then freaking Denji just got cut in half. Um, I think I got misprinted volume because this isn't what happens, right? Okay, so Makima's not dead. I am okay now. I am, I'm a little bit happier that Makima's not dead. But the question still remains, she just lied about being shot. She said that she wasn't shot. So is she a devil? There is something mysterious about her and she's not revealing it. So surely she has to be like a devil or something. Uh, Makima is my favorite character of all time. Dude, what the f she is badass. They waited four volumes to show me her powers. She literally was sacrificing inmates that were on death row for murder to use her powers all the way across the land to help out Denji and the others. What? I don't I don't even know what just happened. That was freaking awesome. And she is my new favorite character in all of manga. Arai is dead. That kind of sucks. I mean, he wasn't like my favorite character, but he didn't deserve to die by any means. But he shielded Kobeni from dying and Kobeni She's pretty badass. She reminds me of like a Zenitsu in some sense where she just has like constant anxiety and is freaking out. But the second she just like snaps out of it, she's completely badass. So I guess let's uh let's see where we go from here. It looks like she wants to quit as well. So Aki's still alive and getting treatment, but he did use his sword in that fight, and it seems like the curse that he has when he uses the sword, which is infinitely powerful, says that he only has two years left to live, which is pretty depressing because he only used it to save people's lives and he's getting punished for it which which honestly kind of sucks i don't know what i would do in that situation i mean obviously you want to do the good deed but then you're also cutting down your life every single time you use the sword okay so now imino is confirmed dead too so that means imino and arai are both dead i really liked imino and she was only in it for like one and a half volumes so that kind of sucks denji and power are now working with a special division one guy named master who seems pretty badass why are you introducing me to characters that i care about just to to rip them away from me within like one volume. That's not nice, Fujimoto. It's not nice at all. So what I did find interesting is a small line in this manga, which happened when Denji was thinking about everybody dying and how he would feel about it. Imino just said that she was his friend and he wasn't shedding any tears or anything. And the line that really got me was, did I lose not just my organ heart, but my human heart too? Which is interesting because he kind of has to be unbiased and not really care about a lot of people because he's just going to keep losing people in this 
this fight for him to get attached to all of these characters that we can quickly see are just gonna get taken away from us volume after volume would be really bad okay what i find hilarious is that after being killed at least 20 times by the most powerful devil hunter master as we call him so far denji and power think that they can defeat him by using their minds which is pretty ironic because both of them they're a little dim to be fair in this chapter we see aki seeing a woman come into his room that he looks very relieved to see so is imano alive still the letters from imano to her younger sister are freaking depressing Pressing man like it sucks because she was just trying to live a normal happy life with Aki and that's the last thing he wanted which to be fair you can't change anybody on what they desire but they clearly had a connection and a bond and now that she's gone it's just so sad because I liked Imano a lot and Aki only has two years left to live so it seems like Makima's got some ulterior motives it seems like she knew the attack was going to happen that killed a bunch of people including Imano and she still kind of let it happen what's really sad in this manga is in general and the story throughout is how harshly everybody takes the people around them passing even though they know they're probably going to die master for example is like a super drunk but it's only because he keeps losing the people that he trains that he cares so deeply about and it's just really sad to see in an already pretty much post-apocalyptic world with devils running rampant how heavy of a toll just normal human life is on top of it so now aki has new powers he's made a deal with the future devil who says he's gonna die in the most brutal way possible but Aki doesn't care he just wants to avenge Imano it seems and probably maybe the saddest thing so far in this manga is the fact that the ex-Yakuza's grandson the samurai devil guy literally has a, an army of zombies of people that couldn't pay off their debts to the Yakuza which is so depressing that not only were they being used in real life they died are zombies and are being used as undead in a battle where they will just die again. It looks like someone named Sawatari, which is the snake girl that they originally fought earlier, who killed Imano, and the samurai devil sword man, whatever his name is, who is part of the Yakuza that Denji killed, are now going in for round two, and they brokered a deal with the gun devil to give guns to Yakuza members to try and assassinate some of the public safety agents. <laughs> Makima is just so badass. She literally just took the eyes of all of the family members of the Yakuza. It's pretty crazy. Like, I already know this story is graphic but they just go to extra lengths to keep surprising you. Okay, so we have finished volume four. This manga is really good. It's really, really good. Honestly, the first two volumes were a little bit slow for me. It's just ramping up in increasing fashion. We've already got Senji and the Samurai Man fighting on the cover. This is honestly my favorite cover of Chainsaw Man. It is by far the coolest in my opinion. <sighs> There's just been so many deaths recently. I can't take anymore. I need, I need them to calm down with the deaths of the main characters, please. Aki's new power is pretty awesome. He can see a sliver into the future so he knows what's going to happen right before it happens. That's actually a really, really cool power. I never would have conjured that up in my head, but that's sick. I would love that power. And it seems like he's okay dying because he just wants to get back with Imano and see her again in the afterlife. What I just realized is actually kind of crazy that the samurai sword devil man is essentially chainsaw man just with samurai swords or katanas on his head and arms instead of chainsaws. So they're basically like a mere copy of each other fighting right now. Denji just freaking smoked the samurai sword, man. That was a really cool fight scene. And now we are learning after Makima talks about Sawatari killing herself because that was her contract with the gun devil that she now has enough gun devil flesh to finally find out where he is. So we are getting closer to finding the gun devil, but there are still six and a half volumes left. Can't imagine things going too well too fast so far. This manga started a little bit slow and hit its stride and has not stopped since. It is so good. It's honestly so freaking good. I cannot wait till part two and I'm not even done with part one. Ooh, Denji's going on a date with Makima. They're going on a little movie hopping marathon. Honestly, it's a really cute date and it's pretty hilarious that they're just sitting and all the movies so stoically not having any reaction while everybody around them is either laughing or crying until the last movie that impacts both of them so it seems that they're not as different from each other and that's probably why Makima is so drawn to Denji in the first place and honestly is a real moving scene at the end of this chapter where Denji questions if he even has a heart or feelings in the first place because people keep telling him that he doesn't have any emotions or a heart in general so it's nice to see Denji actually care and want to feel things. Oh, so after a date with Makima, love triangle is sprouting. Denji has met someone in a phone booth. I think it was a phone 
phone booth called Riz or Rezi. I don't really know how to pronounce her name, but she's definitely into him. She is definitely into him. A nice little coffee date. It's kind of funny and a little bit sad because what Denji says is, oh, I like people who like me. Oh crap, help me Makima. I'm going to fall for this chick. Yes, that's great that Denji is finally forming relationships, but it's also a little bit sad that he has had no one in his life for so long that any affection that he gets, he instantly falls for that person. Poor Denji, poor Denji. This date with Rezi or Rez, I don't... I don't know how to say her name, but, and Denji is, is super cute. Like she's just teaching him all of the intricacies of being a kid and growing up and going to school and swimming. It's just really pure and wholesome. And I really enjoy this chapter, but I know that it's not going to be that happy. Something's going to freaking happen and I'm not okay with it. I'm not okay with it. Yep. I was right. Looks like Rezi is going to get kidnapped by the typhoon devil fiend, whatever freaking, can there just be like one glimpse of happiness for a second in this cruel freaking story? Story. Hold on, hold on, hold on. It's like a, a double, a triple cross. Rez or Rezzy is what? Higher up than the typhoon guy? She just freaking bodied him like it was nothing? It was actually a cool little touch. It was raining in the story because the typhoon devil fiend was on his way. I didn't realize it till after. Now Denji is falling for a girl that is probably plotting to kill him. Can I just breathe for a second? Hey, Fujimoto, can you can you just give me like one second of calmness? So that is a wrap on volume five. It looks like Rezi or Rez is plotting to take Denji away from the public safety group and will probably lure him into some kind of trap is my guess, which sucks because he's clearly falling for her and she's doing a lot for him that he hasn't got to experience in his life before, um, which probably is gonna lead to a lot of trust issues in the future for Denji. And now I gotta see what happens in volume Team six with the Rezi and and Denji. He's gonna fall for this girl and she's gonna freaking break his heart, man. It's like either people are dying, people are getting their hearts broken. Surely, surely there's gonna be some happiness somewhere. Well, I'm about 10 pages in and he's already tricking Denji into going with her because she just kissed him. She just kissed him and he clearly likes her, but I don't think he wants to go full scale all out and just leave the public safety because he clearly likes Makima and the people around him. Okay, wait, that scene was actually insane. She just kissed him to try and lure him away, bit his tongue off and sliced off his arm before he can go full chainsaw mode and then says like the cruelest, coldest line of all time, I'm gonna take your heart denji what she literally was doing both emotionally and now physically shark fiend comes in to save the day that was a very cool scene reze is pretty badass she kind of looks like the version of denji when he goes full chainsaw in a way but she goes like full bomb mode anything she touches just explodes which is pretty interesting and she has like a little grenade pin on her neck which changes her that's honestly really cool artwork things are not looking good apparently she is the gun devil's ally so i'm sure she's pretty upper rank i don't really know how they're gonna kill her because she is absolutely insane. She decapitated herself so she didn't get infected by the mold that was put on her by some of the agents and then she just started attacking people and regenerated from her head and her body that she decapitated from blew up into a bomb. But all I gotta say is don't be a public safety agent in this manga because it doesn't turn out well. So it's clearly that part in the manga where the main character comes up against a character that is way too strong for him to fight and he's gonna have to go back and hone his powers in because my god Denji is getting his ass kicked right now. It looks like Aki is going to maybe fight Reze now which I don't think is going to turn out good no matter what. I feel like she's too powerful at the moment for pretty much anybody. Maybe Makima could kill her but I don't know. Like how are they going to kill the gun devil if they can't deal with Reze right now? Doesn't seem too promising. This battle actually just became hilarious. <laughs> Denji gets revived by the angel devil who is actually really cool. I haven't even talked about him. Anytime he touches somebody he siphons life out of them which is a really Really cool power but also terrible because you can never have close interaction with anybody but freaking denji is over here riding beam the shark fiend to attack his girl which is so funny because it's so ridiculous there's a man made of chainsaws riding a giant shark man <laughs> this story is insane but i love it in the middle of battle a touching moment with aki and the angel devil he saves her instead of letting her go even though she's ready to die aki just can't lose any more people which i mean is very heroic in a sense but he just keeps 
keeps cutting his life shorter and shorter and I'm already invested in Aki. I don't want him to die. Okay, so volume six is done and honestly, that was really sad. I just went through a roller coaster of emotions here because at first, after they were done battling Reze and Denji, I was like, okay, why did he not kill her? He could have just killed her, gone on his way and not have had to worry about her ever again. But it turns out that she does care about him and he asks to run away with her for good. She, I think, might have done it. Honestly, she might have done it because they were not too different from each other. She was a Soviet prisoner since she was a child and has been used her whole life just like Denji. So they clearly created a connection and just as she was thinking about it, Makima and the angel devil slay her so she could not meet Denji at the cafe to run away. It's just, it's not okay. It's not okay, Fujimoto. Anytime something positive is happening, he just rips it away and loses that glimmer of hope. But at the end of the day, it is a dark, cruel world that they live in, as we can tell from the first six volumes. We're going on to volume seven, but clearly it's like the devil world is terrible, obviously, and the human world is not much better. <laughs> Fujimoto does a great job of reminding us of that and kind of grounding you just when you get your hopes up and you think things are going well for the characters. So on to volume seven. Here we go. Starting out with a bang in chapter 7, I'm only on page 15, I think. Turns out that Reze's whole mission was just to expose Denji to the world and show everyone where he is. So now there's going to be multiple organizations or even devils after Denji because they know he's in Japan. They're coming for him now. They are coming for him because he has been broadcasted to the world. So we get a little interesting insight into how devils are made and die and revived in this chapter, which basically says, you probably know this, but devils don't die in the truest sense. Even if they die and turn to ash, as long as people fear them, they'll come back to life in another form. Only they don't revive in this world, they come back in hell. And then, I don't know if this is true or false, devils who die in hell apparently come to this world. They have an endless cycle of death and rebirth. So what is the point even? It seems like they are just fighting an impossible battle. Okay, hold up. Literally next page after I just read that quote, the angel devil says that every single devil remembers the sound in hell, the only sound that they can possibly remember is the sound that Denji makes when he is Chainsaw Man. So I don't know if they're alluding to some kind of future past time travel thing where Denji is going to eventually murder everyone because all the devils remember is just that Denji sound. That's an interesting development we have here on our hands. <laughs> Once again, if Denji kills everybody, I'm going to be so sad. Plans are moving and assassins from all over the world are giving details about closing in on Denji. We've got America. We've got one of the most sinister Santa Claus in Germany. We've got China. They're all about to converge on Denji. So I think it's about to be a pretty pretty insane battle in this volume or the next. Uh, I'm interested to see where this goes. And it's funny because Denji's pea brain is just like, oh, all I gotta do is kill these assassins and then we can go on that postponed trip with Makima. <laughs> Easy, just, just kill all of the world's most elite assassins. Just that's it. The Americans are already in town assassinating members of Denji's bodyguard party. He's got like 10 bodyguards. But what they were alluding to right before they died is Makima does have an ulterior motive. Everybody keeps trying to kind of allude to it and then either dying or not getting to it. So I don't know. Do I trust Makima? I love her as a character, but if she betrays me, I'm going to be very upset. <laughs> Slowly but surely, every single assassin group is converging in Japan on Denji. At the same time, what are the odds? Of course it's happening all at once, so I don't even know what's going to happen. Are they all going to fight each other? Or are they all going to team up together to fight Denji? Because that is unfair. That's like 12v1 at least minimum. So this is about to be heartbreaking, I feel. Okay, I don't know what's going on right now, but they said if Santa is still alive, the assassin from Germany, then they are screwed and they will not win this battle. And Santa is alive. He's out there turning humans into dolls. And if they touch another human, that human turns into a doll as well. But then freaking Quan Ji, the Chinese assassin, assassin and his friends come into town and just start slicing everyone in half with like telekinesis. So who are we really worried about right now? Volume 7 is wrapped up and yet another cliffhanger but thankfully we have the rest of part 1 in our possession. Honestly I don't really know what to think. It's he should be the master assassin who is training Denji before it is now plotting to kill Makima. I don't know if other people have ulterior motives, if Makima is bad, if the rest of the organization that's plotting with the Chinese assassin Quan Ji is bad. 
I don't know what's happening. I need answers and I need answers fast. And we're on to eight. Oh my gosh. I don't even know what to say right now. Turns out Santa, the assassin from Germany, was the grandfather of one of the other assassins that just put a curse on Denji and killed him. As far as I know, he hasn't gotten back up in about five pages. Santa just sacrificed his own life and his family's lives to the hell devil to send everybody in the department store to hell, which is all of the people protecting Denji, Denji himself, and possibly other assassins that are in that store right now currently trying to get to Denji. I guess we're about to take a trip to hell. So in hell, turns out there's even more dangerous devils than the gun devil himself that is up in the real world. These devils have never experienced death, and I guess they're called the transcendent. Not only was he going to take down the gun devil, who I don't even know how they were going to fight, they now find themselves in a temporary truce the assassins and Denji's crew all the public safety agents in order to just try and survive hell this depiction of hell is pretty crazy and is interesting to say the least and it looks like the doll devil is trying to get the power to kill Makima so is Makima more feared than Denji I don't really know what's happening with that they haven't addressed it they're very cryptic about Makima as a whole so we'll see it seems like Denji's about to be sacrificed to a, a hell devil I gotta I gotta focus on that first everybody's just getting absolutely eviscerated by this hell devil so I really don't know how this story is gonna continue for three more volumes yeah I really don't know what's going on at this point because Makima just offered herself to the hell devil to go back up to earth where Santa Claus is waiting for them. Now other people are speculating that Santa Claus and Makima both have motives for something that nobody knows about. What the hell is going on? No pun intended. Chapter 8 is in the books. This fight scene at the end with one of Santa Claus dolls essentially he just controls dolls all around the world to mitigate pain by being attacked by one person in one area. It doesn't really do much to him but when Denji lit himself on fire and freaking attacked the assassin doll. That was insane. It was really freaking cool and made the artwork in the fight scene like 10 times better than it already is. And on top of it, Makima comes in to save the day per usual. But the crazy thing about Makima is everybody has to blindfold themselves when she comes because she is so powerful and doesn't want anyone to see her abilities. I still don't know what's going on with Makima. We've got three volumes left and I don't know how they're going to wrap up this first part. The depiction of hell was really, really cool in my opinion as well. There's still a lot to happen, I feel. They still have to go after the gun devil if they're going to. And we still know nothing about Makima. Aki might die soon. Like, there's there's a lot happening. Volume 9, here we go. Oh, another great movie choice by Fujimoto. I love Get Out. Seems like he's really into a lot of horror stuff, which makes sense with how dark this manga is. The only thing that I will say that I don't really love about this manga is how childish it can get in some parts or like trivial. I know it's meant to do the same thing that like superhero movies do to break up the monotony of just action and saving the world at a little joke of like younger humor in there. But it's just, it's hard for me to stay in the moment when that happens. That's it. That's like literally my only criticism but that's pretty much every shonen or superhero movie out there so I should just accept it and move on but here we go volume 9. So it looks like everyone was heavily affected by going to hell which honestly makes sense. Kombeni resigned which she was an interesting character they didn't spend too much time on her but I liked how quiet she was and how badass she could turn into. I feel like if they spend some more time maybe she'll come back but violence and shark are now dead. I loved shark he was cool and power is all messed up too in the head so and she, nothing affects her her. So it's seeming a little down for the good guys right now. I gotta give a little clap for Denji for being a good friend and not going on the trip with Makima, the one girl he is absolutely obsessed with, the one trip he fantasized about the whole time fighting this terrible battle against all these assassins. He stays home with Power, who is clearly, clearly messed up after that whole hell incident, and he's just taking care of her. So good guy Denji, good guy Denji for sure. Honestly, this volume is way too wholesome so far. I'm expecting something horrible to happen. Aki just pulled out the experimental division which includes Denji and Power from fighting against the gun devil even though that's all Aki wanted to do his entire life because the gun devil killed his family. I don't trust it. It's somber 
but it's also moving things in the right direction for the characters, which should not be happening. Hey, Fujimoto, you're not gonna get me this time. Turns out they're already back in the mission to defeat the gun devil. It was like two pages. And Makima is saying that the gun devil is already defeated. The Soviets found him when he was in an unconscious state, and currently a bunch of different countries have pieces of the gun devil, and the rest of the gun devil is in other devils. So he's like too far gone to complete any attacks, is what she's saying. But I don't trust her right now. I do not trust her. I'm on volume nine, and the entire objective was to kill the gun devil. Now all of a sudden, the gun devil is just not there. Uh -uh. Now you're gonna tell me that freaking Aki has a future premonition that Denji's gonna kill him and power? What? No, Denji's not gonna kill them, man. <laughs> Denji's not gonna kill them. What I will say though is I don't know if Fujimoto is doing this on purpose or not. Interesting the way he writes this manga with the whole gun devil being spread across the world and also the fact that one country is trying to get the possession of the power so they can essentially rule over other countries. I'm assuming Assuming that he probably did it on purpose and it's like a little bit of a take on imperialism if we want to just look deeper than the fact that there is a chainsaw man massacring devils I'm assuming that's what he's talking about while while the lower class are doing all of the bidding to get control of something that will later push them down even more I don't know maybe I'm reaching <sighs> Okay, Makima is evil. I freaking knew it. I didn't want to believe it. I literally did not want to believe it, but she is evil. She's the control devil, and it makes sense. She literally asks Aki to give himself to her and make a contract, and only devils do that and abide by their contracts. <sighs> and he wanted to save power and Denji. It's crazy to me that Aki has had so many chances to walk away from this life and still doesn't, and that's what's gonna cost him his life. And now Makima's evil. And what I find funny in this past chapter is the fact that they go to America and America makes a pact with the gun devil of all devils to eliminate Makima, who turns out to be the most feared devil out there. It's Makima, it's freaking Makima. Under our noses the whole time. I knew she was bad. I no, she was this freaking mad. I'm a little bit sad because Makima was one of my favorite characters, but I don't know how they're gonna defeat her because it seems like she takes everyone's life force and power and just tricks them into giving it to her in exchange for like some trivial, meaningless wish. So I guess we'll see what happens. I'm scared to keep reading. I really am. Let me quickly say the scene with the gun devil at the church, that is gruesome and dark. It's honestly such a sad depiction of reality. So Makima is now out to kill Denji in power, I guess. She lives literally turned Aki into a gun fiend, sent them to the house, and now they're fighting Aki the new gun fiend. But she made a contract to keep them alive and safe, so I don't really know what the goal is here, but it's pretty sad because now she's turning everybody that they really connected with and formed a relationship against them. Volume 9 is done. She freaking turned Aki into a gun fiend, slaughtering everybody in the streets, which he literally, Imano has said, he cries after every casualty. And he's just killing innocent people, fighting Denji which Denji then kills him to save innocent people's lives. Oh my gosh. And the future devil says you have died in the worst way possible for the chainsaw boy. Which does that mean Denji's gonna become bad? I can't deal with this man. I love Aki. I knew Aki was gonna die sooner or later. I didn't think he was gonna freaking die in part one. They said he had like two two years left or something. Dude, I don't even want to keep reading. I'm depressed at this point. All right, here we go. Volume 10 with Makima on the front, who is now bad as well. All this manga is teaching me is that there is no good in the world. You cannot trust any Anybody, no human, no other life form, they will all turn around and kill you at any moment. <laughs> Aki, dude. I didn't want Aki to die. Okay, Fujimoto, you know what is messed up, man? You know what is messed up? In every single volume, in the first couple pages, they show all of the characters and give a little bit of description about them. Well, guess what? It used to be like two or three pages. It is now one and a half pages of characters because everybody has freaking died, man. I don't know. For some reason, I thought that Power and Denji would have figured out that Makima was behind this, but they haven't. And and Denji is just sitting here reeling from killing Aki, which he literally didn't even believe he had a heart, to now is just feeling all of the emotions possible. I, I really don't know. He's he's chilling with Makima. I thought he, for some reason in my head, I thought that he figured that it would be Makima. Okay, what the hell is going on? So Denji decides to visit Makima because he is out of his mind. He just killed Aki and feels terrible. And Makima says that she will give him the one wish 
that she promised and he just wants to be her dog because she has a ton of dogs and he doesn't want to have to think about life anymore it makes sense who doesn't want to be a dog you have no worries you're just happy all the time pretty much but then freaking power comes over because it's denji's birthday the next day and makima kills her supposedly if power is dead as well i'm done i'm done i'm done i'm literally done i can't deal with imano aki power all dying dude those are like Three awesome characters, dude. So now what you're telling me is that Makima is telling Denji that he killed his own father. He keeps seeing this door over and over. He never opens it. And he finally opens it and reveals that he killed his own dad because his dad tried to kill him. And Makima reveals that she's been literally plotting to give Denji this amazing life. So he finally feels happiness and goes under her control. And then she rips it all the way constantly over and over and she promises to rip it away no matter what as long as he just obeys her but the weird thing is she's saying it's time for you to atone for your sins as if he killed his own dad but why does she care so much about that that's the real question well what is going on i i keep asking what is going on but it's like it's this story gets crazier and crazier by the minute kishibi who has been on to makima since the beginning pretty much he's like the only one literally launches an anti-makima squad shooting her into oblivion and then constantly contracting the hell devil to take her to hell just as she is pretty much useless she calls on denji to save her of course and denji is her dog literally her dog kills the hell devil and gets cast into hell himself and she literally says attacks made on her will be changed into appropriate illnesses and accidents among japanese citizens she is like the ultimate evil i've ever seen in any story ever so how did all of this power come from the cutest little pochita i've ever seen so basically we find out why Denji is so important. He is the devil that devils fear the most, quite literally. Once he eats someone or something, they are forgotten from existence and cannot be reborn. So even with that cycle that I mentioned where devils can go to hell or come back and the cycle just continues and continues, if Denji eats them or if Chainsaw Man eats them, they are just gone and they're never coming back, which is pretty insane. So he's like the ultimate evil past Makima technically, which I feel so bad for Denji. I feel so bad for him. He just wanted a normal life and it's turned into the complete opposite. So Makima's grand plan is revealed. She wants to eventually kill Chainsaw Man and take control of him or just have him under her wing essentially so she can carry out her evil plans essentially to take over the world. The crazy thing is she literally says she's a fan of Chainsaw Man. So even if she dies trying to do it, she's okay with that. She's okay with being consumed by him. It's like cult-like levels. To me, he just was formed. Like there's this weird worshiping going on that feels so abnormal. Volume 10 is done. I, I don't even know what to say at this point. This volume was just really depressing for me after what happened in volume 9. But Makima launches like a full-scale attack of all of the devils that Denji couldn't kill in the past. So like the Samurai Sword Man. Reze and and others it seems like she still can't take him down and Denji's just not really snapping out of it either but it ends with him slicing everyone including Makima in half so we'll see what happens in the epic conclusion of part one I want it to somehow be happy I don't know how that will happen but I'm praying that something good happens just once in this manga at least at the ending please everyone is dead at this point literally everyone even pretty much Denji as himself is dead all right so volume 11 is starting off with an absolute bang everybody's public perception has not changed of chainsaw man it used to be fearing him but now everyone loves him because they've seen with their own eyes what he has done to save countless countless people so with that being said as i mentioned before devils thrive on fear and their strength is related to fear so of course nobody fears him anymore so he is now weak and getting destroyed by makima <laughs> how awesome is it that when he is finally seen great in public eye that that makes him weaker somehow it's kind of sad. Lot freaking go power power saving the day coming through pochita merges with power so she will save denji from makima thank god power and denji have been great for each other since day one let's keep it real they're both a little dim-witted they're both happy just eating and going wild in the world let's go power let's go power just sacrificed herself to save denji dude she could have just saved him and they live happily ever after she has to freaking die she asks him to promise to go 
find the blood devil so she can meet with him once again but come on like just let her be the hero one of these scenes almost moved me man i, I almost felt the tear shedding in this manga is pretty powerful the scene with konbeni he should be and denji all sitting around and konbeni just being happy that she's not gonna be able to talk to her parents anymore because she's in danger and her life was terrible and denji just wanting to live a normal life and regretting every single decision he's made up until now and the fact that he can't become chainsaw man because makima will kill him but then he sees himself finally being praised by everyone out there for doing the right deed and not asking for anything in return and he's just filled and overwhelmed with emotion and he's just so happy that he's finally useful to the world he feels a sense of fulfillment gosh that was that was a little bit of a tearjerker i can't lie looks like we're in the last battle of the manga series of part one of chainsaw man even with denji being considerably weaker as chainsaw man he goes to fight makima and her goons makima just ripped denji's heart out so not looking too good right now not looking too good it's kind of crazy though even in that scene when she's talking about it she's like what more do i have to do chainsaw man doesn't do this chainsaw man doesn't wear that chainsaw man should be chaotic she's literally telling denji how to live his life as chainsaw man while he's dying which is nuts even his last breaths technically so far he's still being ordered around yo denji just used some level 99 trickery out of the book he just pulled out of his ass he literally tore a piece of pochita off of his heart to create like a fictional denji for her to fight and distract and once she thinks that she killed him denji freaking pulls up with a chainsaw zoop, and takes makima down for now we've got like 20 more pages to go surely nothing crazy will happen now right okay so we are done we are done with part one the public safety arc of chainsaw man thank god it ended happily kind of power's gone still technically they have to try and find her with the blood devil but freaking denji kills makima slices her up like a freaking serial killer and eats her what did i just read he literally eats her to get rid of her because normal attacks don't kill her i mean it's kind of smart but also a little bit disturbing what what more can i expect from a freaking manga like this wow that was a roller coaster man it honestly was this manga was fantastic it honestly felt like i was climbing a mountain it was just slowly increasing 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 until it just got like insane just absolutely chaotic insane in all of the best ways touched on a lot of great themes class disparity being yourself i don't even know I, i'm i'm honestly kind of speechless right now i want to give like an immediate review first impression but i don't know what to say like i'm kind of blown away it's a really really good story i didn't think that i would like it as much to be honest i always say this but i'm not the biggest fan of shonens yeah chainsaw man did it for me it was a lot more than just a shonen i mean the fact that fujimoto did not care about taking anyone's life in this story even multiple times was insane it's something that i don't expect from stories i don't expect everyone to die i expect like one or two people to die literally everybody in this freaking story died and i was attached to all of them which sucked or they became evil which sucked even more <laughs> yeah this is a great story i cannot wait for arc number two i really can't i'm a little bit sad that i waited this long but also really happy because i could just read it all through in one entire day denji's a great character he really is and I'm glad that he got a little bit of happiness at the end. He's taking care of Nayuta, who is the new control devil. But hopefully he forms her into a good person, not like Makima. And they're trying to keep her away from the government, so nothing bad comes from it. First impressions, I mean, you guys got it throughout. I don't know how long this video is even going to be. I hope that it makes sense with all of my incoherent rambling throughout. I was just trying to talk about the mangas as I was reading them. I honestly hope that it makes sense and it has some form of cohesion. But I hope that you enjoyed today's video. And I I hope that you guys are as excited for Chainsaw Man Part 2 as I currently am. It comes out July 13th. I just wanted to see what was going on with this manga because I know it's been so popular. I've just been holding out on reading it for some unknown reason. Part 2 comes out so, so soon or it's already out by the time you guys are watching this. So I will see you guys next video. Hope that you enjoy whatever you are currently reading. If you read Chainsaw Man, give me your thoughts down below. I want to hear what you thought personally. I gotta take a break. I've got a lot to process with everything that just happened. But I hope that you guys have a great rest of your day.